Uh, we're going to talk again uh, to someone who I think will be part of our Clyburn family for years to come. Come on over. Come on over. You didn't want to do this again, but well, I'm glad you did it again. <laughs> uh, what I want to talk about, this is Folly Pavri of our Hi. jury, and we just can't figure out why you've not been a part of the Clyburn family until now, but we'll, you know, we'll just fix that. We'll have you back over <laughs> and Thank over. Thank you very much. That's, that's what we do here. Um, competitions, you did not take that route yourself, well, I, I did, did you? I did a few. I did a few. Well, I did a few in India, first mm -hmm. of all. And then I did Sydney, which was a very big competition, mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't win. And I did Dublin. And here you are anyway. <laughs> and I didn't win either. Somehow you managed but, to uh, forge a career. Yeah, I, 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 I must say I found competitions very, very difficult. I, I, what, I, was the, what was personally difficult for you about them? Well, I, I find the whole concept of competition slightly problematic in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I know it's, it's a wonderful route for young pianists, mm -hmm. to, but... but uh, I, I just found the whole kind of aspect of of uh, being evaluated mm -hmm. slightly problematic. Intensely evaluated I, I much, <laughs> and publicly I'd much evaluated, rather, right? I'd, much, I'd much rather just perform right. uh, without having that kind without of... Without that uh, element, because that's public evaluation, too. And there's, absolutely. There's I'm, enough I'm, of that I'm, when I'm, you're just performing, exactly, right? There's, exactly, you're being evaluated, exactly. but this way, there's no way to just imagine that yeah. it's just a concert. Yeah. And also, also the imagine. fact that... that you know, I know so many pianists who kind of are on the circuit, the competition circuit, right. and they go from one competition after the other. And, until and, they're too uh, old to do so. Until they're too old, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just found the whole thing slightly kind of uh, not for me. There's so many different routes you mm -hmm. can take into music, and, and that is a very valid one. Mm -hmm. You have forged a wonderful career for yourself, though, and it, and it seems like a lot of it, I mean, you were, you were ready for the opportunities that presented themselves to you, yeah. uh, like uh, playing so for Rostropovich so all over India. So much depends on luck, mm -hmm. and so much depends right. on, on mm -hmm. you know, being there at the right time, meeting the right... I'll tell you a story, actually, about, about how luck can influence mm -hmm. uh, one course of one's life. I mean, I was studying at the Royal Academy, and I was finishing, and I'd already played with Rostropovich, but still, mm -hmm. I, I, was, I, I still wasn't... Uh, on an Indian passport, mm -hmm. and as you know, it's very difficult to get visas in, in, in any countries, right. certainly in the US, and, and it was the same in the UK. And my visa was running out, at, you know, I had about three months left, and I had this wonderful opportunity to give a recital in the Purcell Room on the South Park Centre, which is a very prestigious hall in, in London. So I gave this recital, uh, and it went quite well, and, you know, but people came backstage afterwards, and this woman came backstage, and she kind of congratulated me and, and said, well done, etc. And she enjoyed my playing. And then she asked me what my future plans were. And I said, well, actually, I probably have to go back home because my visa's run out. She said, oh, no, no, you mustn't go back home. You, you must stay here. You know, you've got such a good future ahead. I'll help you. <laughs> and it just turned out by pure chance that she happened to be the niece of an ex-prime minister. Oh, well. Of Great Britain. <laughs> <laughs> And she knew the right people, who right. You know, she connected me with the right people, she, and she told me how to go about it. And, you know, in a few months' time, I had leave to remain. So, which is a wonderful because of her, of you're still in the UK today? Well, exactly. Maybe. Yeah. Well, yeah. it seems like you were, you were also ready for the opportunities that presented themselves, and also uh, that you have a certain curiosity about music that you haven't grown up with, that you didn't know, but that you know now, because this has led to a lot of recordings that we talked about before, mm. like Swiss piano mm. concerti, uh, that you didn't know and had never heard of the composers yeah. and, and stuff like that. So when somebody comes to you with a request like that, do you auto is your answer always yes? No, or no, it's not. How do you but decide? also, I often ask people to write, write. for me mm -hmm. these days, and, and that's a very wonderful thing to get friends and, and you know composers that you admire to write things for you is a very exciting thing. In fact, I just recorded a piece that a friend of mine wrote for me, um, and it's such a joy to do something like that because you know that it, it's it's done for You're you. You're on the ground know. floor. You, exactly. Uh, <laughs> do you do you insert yourself into the process of composition at all? Do composers ever come to you and say, "I'm thinking of writing this in this way"? Is it is it ever appropriate to say that really doesn't work Sometimes, on the piano at all? Or for example, I've mm -hmm. got this new piano trio, mm -hmm. and we just commissioned a Scottish composer to write a piece for us based because it's called the Rembrandt Piano Trio, mm -hmm. and we decided it would be good idea to have a piece based on a painting by Rembrandt and we've asked him to compose a piece based on the night watch which is one of mm -hmm. his great paintings so that's interesting I was just discussing last week with him what how he'd go about this process mm -hmm. and, and of course there is some input but on the in, in the end it's, it's there 
it's their baby. Right. And I was also reading in your bio uh, about a piece you play uh, with a percussionist. That's uh, right. Mm -hmm. and, and gosh, you've done a lot of research here. Well, you know, I, have, I have time to, to read your bio every Yes, every I have a very good friend actually who lives mm -hmm. in America. She lives mm -hmm. in uh, Columbus, Ohio. Mm -hmm. And we studied together in Moscow, and she's from Serbia. And she wrote this wonderful piece, which is for, for piano, huge percussion, and also One player or two, two players? Two players, oh. and electronics also. Mm -hmm. So it's a wonderful kind of spectacle. Thing. So do you have percussionist friends that you work with, or you do now? Well, you have them now? Funny enough, I, <laughs> I premiered it at the Royal Conservatory in mm -hmm. Scotland with two of our finest students mm -hmm. playing percussion. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it was, it was uh, it was in our piano festival, and it was really good fun. You know, that is that is not an unheard of combination in the U.S. either. There are there are, there are composers that write for mm -hmm. piano and one percussionist, or piano and percussionist mm -hmm. and an electronic element. It uh, was a first for me. Yeah. I'd never done that before. <laughs> <laughs> and now I've played quite a lot with electronics. Mm -hmm. I find it quite quite interesting. But you collaborate with a lot of people. You have a piano trio. Yeah. You play yeah. uh, cello and piano of, concerts with your wife. You uh, a lot of duos also. I play with lots of different <laughs> string instruments. Right, and you've played. With Especially singers. cellists, I seem to have some kind of a. You have a reputation with now. cellists. I don't know why. <laughs> you married a cellist, so you have a reputation. Well, I, I also know. I suppose I know quite a lot of the cello repertoire now, right, and that, right. that kind of helps. But you played with singers as well, I quite have. a lot. I think that's so, my, actually my favorite thing to do. It is mine as well. Oh, is it? Oh, absolutely, it's mine. I think as well. that is the ultimate joy. Playing it is uh, because you have a text to. Yeah. Uh, there's something very, very immediate and something about, about the human playing voice. A fabulous and, singer that's yeah. just unbeatable. Yeah, it's it's really true, and also a singer can really make a big room small. A singer and also, can really do that. pianists. I mean, our biggest quest is to somehow play like a singer. Right. And that that is the thing we are all kind mm -hmm. of looking for, and and it's the biggest challenge I think for pianists. So you you're musically a very curious person. I think that I think that's what separates you somehow from from a lot of other pianists out there is that you have a native curiosity you will uh, play you will you will go to composers and, and commission them to write for you mm -hmm. you will uh, uh, answer a phone call asking you to record Swiss piano concertos mm -hmm. you will you will do these things I think that's a valuable lesson for people to learn, you I know, and so, I'm yeah. sure you impart it to your students uh, that you have Absolutely. the Royal Conservatory. And also now, opportunities that are not that often coming to you. You right, have to find them, right. seek them. And, you have and to you find have them, to, you have to be yeah. prepared for them yeah. as well. So in the realm of teaching collaborative piano, mm -hmm. how does one do that? It's different from teaching piano lessons. Teaching, teaching well, how to play with somebody else is a, a different sort of thing. It is a different sort mm -hmm. of thing, but on the other hand, it's such a rewarding sort mm -hmm. of thing. And, and I think all solo pianists should study that because it, it completely transforms your solo playing. Absolutely. When you learn how to play, when you learn how to breathe with singers, you learn how to play with, with strings, and you learn how to kind of talk to them. And by that, right. you can kind of right. talk in your own music. Learning it's, how to rehearse, yeah. basically. Yeah, and, and also the sense of communication. It's such an absolutely vital thing about performance. It is. You're going to be in this country again in the fall, right? Uh, for I am, the that's right. That's right. <laughs> the <Sorry. Olga> <laughs> in November. I'll just in, remind you about your in life. You're going that's to. right. Yes, I'd forgotten about that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> will it be your first time in New Mexico? It will. I, I, I don't know anything about New Mexico. It's beautiful. Except it's you'll, got nice weather. Yes, and you'll enjoy it. It's a nice <laughs> time to be in New Mexico. It's a beautiful place. Uh, Olga yeah. says the, con uh, the competition lasts about 10 days. So you'll that's have right. A, yes. You'll have a great time. Thanks Thank for talking to much. us again. Thank you.